Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. This is Chrissy Raywalk, Director of Intercollegiate Athletics at the University of Delaware. One of the things that I appreciate and enjoy most about leadership is that it is a journey, not a destination. It involves lots of different twists and turns, and you need many different types of people to go along with you on your journey in order for it to be successful. So today I invite you to start your leadership journey with this podcast. Enjoy. Greetings, this is Ty Brown and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at 1Q Leadership. Our guest today is Wesley Ellison Stewart. Wesley is Associate Vice President for Major Giving and Development at Boston College. Greetings, Wesley. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Ty. Yes, ma'am. Now, your background, spent time as a Senior Associate Athletics Director and Director of Development for Athletics there at Boston College. You spent some time in fundraising at University of Texas. And of course, you learned the art of fundraising at the Fundraising Academy that everyone calls University of Michigan. It seems like there are a lot of people who are uh, well-versed in development that come out of University of Michigan. For some. Now, I may be wrong about that, but I've talked to a number of different people, and they all, especially women, right, come from Michigan in terms of development and athletics. Well, you are not wrong, Ty, and I'm especially biased since it is also <laughs> my alma mater, and I am a proud Michigan alumna as well. That's excellent. Now, I'm a Spartan, so we won't hold that <laughs> against each other. So we'll just continue with the conversation as as it is. Now, Working in development, of course, recently you moved over to work in development for the university as opposed to just working with athletics, which is a major promotion. Congratulations on that. How long ago was that? Thank you. Uh, It was the first week of February, so probably a a month in this new role before uh, the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So it's been a whirlwind to say the least. All right. Welcome welcome to training. On the job, in the fire, let's go development. Make it happen. So. I wonder about this pandemic chapter of world history in terms of fundraising and development and college athletics or even on campus in terms of university enhancement. Talk to me a little bit about that, how this has, especially you're only a month in, so you're just going and figuring it out as it goes almost. Tell me about how this has affected everything that you know about college athletics and development and university enhancement. Absolutely. Um, Well, I think, you know, first and foremost, you know, our work as fundraisers, you know, we are charged to build relationships with our constituents and we define our work by being road warriors. We're we're out engaging with people, having one-on-one meetings and, you know, bringing people to campus, hosting events, you know, making experiences. And obviously that's all been flipped on its head. And so I think, you know, we've had to really reimagine, um, how we do our work and how do we still maintain um, those relationships. Uh, And so that's forced us to think more creatively about the platforms that we use in communicating with our constituents. Um, But also, you know, that, that piece has shifted, right? Where, you know, we're not able to travel, we're not able to engage with our donors in an in-person format, but then also we also have um, people experiencing this pandemic in very different ways. And and that goes um, across the country, right? You know, you look at, you know, what's going on in New York City, that's a huge alumni base for us. Um, The way that they're managing COVID, particularly right now, is very different than um, perhaps central of the country. You know, we're kind of in the thick of it. Um, And so I think being thoughtful about the regional um, responses. Also, we've had to really focus on, um, you know, being really empathetic. And, you know, I tell my team, you know, everything we do needs to come from a place of empathy. And um, actually, at the end of last week, we we shared a great Brene Brown clip, um, you know, really talking quick. If you, you know, Google it, it's a minute just on what empathy is versus sympathy. And, um, you know, how do we put ourselves in our prospects and donors' shoes, um, you know, particularly those donors that may be in the at-risk population versus, um, you know, donors who are financially impacted. Um, and so I think it's, you know, it's it's been an adjustment because, you know, we have, um, you know, people that fall into all different places and are experiencing and responding to this differently. Um, and so I think that's part of the process is, you know, not making assumptions as well, right, that everyone is impacted the same way. Um, you know, and I know there are a lot of industries that are frankly thriving right now. Um, 
you know, you think about the the, inf- the tech infrastructures that are set up for remote online learning, for remote business work. Uh, you think about medical supplies companies, and so how do we, um, you know, navigate that and partner with our research team to prioritize those individuals? And then I think the other piece, obviously, is um, you know our own well-being, right? So you know we're being charged to do this very mission critical work for our institutions, but then we are also experiencing this. Like we may have family members who may be impacted or losing their jobs, or you're a, a new parent. I'm going to speak of my, my my own experience. I have an eight month old at home, and my husband also works, and so we're trying to balance, you know, doing our work and having a, a infant at home. Um, and we have, I have team members who have kids that are in, um, you know, high school and they're trying to teach while they maintain their work. So it's all kind of evolving. Right. Obviously it's definitely significantly different, right? The phone call still going, text messages, do you zoom with donors? Like how, how does that process work now during what we're going through? That's a great, um, no, we've, I mean, I think what's been great is honestly myself, my team members, I think feel like they're even more connecting more frequently because you're getting on the phone. Also our donors are at home too. So, you know, they, their work may be a little slow. They're, they're, you know, they're wanting connectivity, right? They're not having those social engagements. So they've been much more, people are picking up the phone more than they ever have. Um, and that's something I think statistically across the board, um, we've la- we actually launched our first kind of virtual um, leadership. We're calling them the Beacon Leadership Conversation Series. So actually, last week we had a Zoom um, video call that featured our athletic director Martin Jarman, who gave a you know fabulous you know 45 minute kind of state of the union address, provide opportunity to do Q and A, and we had 400 people participate. And that's probably I mean more than we would ever have if we had done a standalone kind of typical donor event, right? And so and I think that was really cool to see um, the connection our donors were having. And you had donors who were, you know, on the high end, your principal level donors, all the way to, you know, your season ticket holder who's giving, you know, $100 a year. And I thought that was a really cool. And so we're doing kind of a series of those with different university leaders. And we actually, yeah, so we're, we're having to, like I said, be more creative about what we do. Um, but yes, we've been doing a lot of virtual meetings and Zoom has become our best friend. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's interesting. It sounds like you, you have people's attention. I mean, when you put something out, they're looking, they're watching, they're listening, right? Interacting. It's actually very interesting. I guess the inverse of that, yeah, you may have mentioned this in your first answer, but they reach out to you like, hey. I mean, we're all struggling here, but I don't want to see our student athletes or our students struggling. What can I do? I imagine they engage you guys. Yeah. And I think that's been what's really um, has been really positive is to kind of also see the outpour of donors and alumni saying, how can I help? Um, and acknowledging, you know, the reality is that you know, so many more of our students are going to qualify for financial aid next year. And that's going to be a huge need that we, you know, we are very committed to providing financial aid for those students who qualify, um, and particularly the newly admitted class, right, of 2024. And so I, um, you know, I think donors understand that's a huge priority. And then also, as I shared earlier, you know, we have our students and student athletes who are facing, you know, expenses and personal hardship that um, make, you know, the ability to do their online courses really difficult. Um, some of our students, you know, we have about 300 students who couldn't go home for extenuating reasons. And so, you know, how do we, so we actually created a Eagles for Eagles, kind of a, an emergency fund, essentially, that, that provides our president discretionary dollars to address um, you know, any of these challenges that are emerging that our students need um, during this time. And so that we we kicked off last week. And I think within a week, we've raised almost $200,000. So it's been really a great sign that, again, our alumni want to help. And as you said, they're reaching out to us as well. Yeah, that's interesting. And and you say more students will be on financial aid because parents have lost jobs. And so the income levels have gone down significantly. Yeah, that's pretty, that's very interesting. I wonder, are there any, uh, like directives, right, from your office, university advancement or development there that everybody is operating on in terms of athletics, in terms of everybody. And I imagine you have a hand in, and I don't know if directives is the word, but it's like, hey, here, here's how we are to ensure we're operating 
during these next couple months? Yeah. So we, we have basically our associate vice president leadership team has a, a essentially a COVID task force that meets, um, it was meeting daily to essentially address business continuity and, and how are we communicating, you know, we're, our advancement community is, you know, almost 250 people of which the athletic advancement team is part of. So that we're all in that. And so I'm part of that. And it, you know, and it's essentially a little bit of a day-to-day assessment, right? Cause the, particularly in the beginning, so much changed so quickly. I mean, I remember, um, you know, the f- second week of March, we were still operating on, you know, we had fundraisers still traveling. And then Wednesday, it was the travel, no events, nothing's happening. You know, so we just, we had to be really nimble. Um, and I'd say, um, you know, our, our directive right now, you know, we, we're doing a little bit, um, well, I'll just back up, we, you know, our fiscal year ends soon. And so we've had to be really thoughtful about how do we still, um, you know, close strong, but be very empathetic, right, and understanding about where our donors are. And, and there may be situations where we're going to have to be flexible in um, donor-based seating, parking, pledge payments. And so, um, but trying to get a, a realistic uh, projection, right, because our university depends on these fundraised dollars to operate. Um, and we, we've also done a little bit of reflection on what happened in 2008. Um, like, for example, when I said um, the financial aid, you know, we saw about a $10 million increase in financial aid after 2008. And so I think we're preparing that it's going to probably be greater. So how do we, again, going back to our fundraiser, you know, how do we identify those, those, those people who are still in a position to make a major investment um, and making sure they're aware of this priority and how much our budget has been impacted. Um, you know, as you know, a lot of us depend on our endowment, right? Our endowment is based on the market and the market has been very volatile. And so that's another hit. And I think the other area that um, a lot of us are faced with right now too is, you know, we spent a lot of funds to send students home and to, you know, adjust our teaching infrastructure to online um, and we and we off and we did refunds right we refunded everyone for room and board and so that was a huge hit we didn't prepare for um, obviously on the athletic side um, you know losing the NCAA tournament was significant right especially a program like BC you know we really depend on those dollars and I think with the the new waiver right uh, that's going to be a hit we're going to have to fundraise more for scholarship on the athletic side so that we can ensure our seniors the opportunity to come back. Um, so I guess that's, you know, our focus has been, you know, what are the needs that we, you know, we have, um, we've been really focused on relationship building so that when we do get to be back on the road, we can work, you know, we can prioritize who's ready and who's, um, you know, going to be, um, ready to have a, a gift conversation. So I, I call it just working smarter, right. You can't, you can't be everything to everyone, especially, um, you know, those, individuals who are managing, you know, their kids and a job and everything, you you know, you've got to figure out how you can get everything you need to get done in, you know, maybe a half day, right, that you wouldn't have normally. So um, I'm just trying to think there's, oh, the other thing, you know, I think has been tough, particularly on the athletic side, is that we, um, due to um, COVID, we had to seize all of our construction. And so, um, capital projects have obviously been a big part of our athletics campaign, the Greater Heights campaign. And so that's been tough to shift towards the student. Not that it's tough, but we had so much emphasis on capital infrastructure and, and the focus is going to have to be more about scholarship moving forward. Yeah, that's interesting. That's another one of the one of the dilemmas that everybody probably has to deal with, right? One other thing you said was that the staff, the people who are engaging have to be, you know, you express the needs, but you have to be empathetic in your communication in I guess, asking and identifying the needs. Everybody's not well versed in being empathetic. Now, development people are definitely relationship folks, but but tell me how you train that. How do you tell every like, how is that something that you have to ensure that people know how to do as a leader in that space on campus? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question because I think um, there's a difference between, you know, someone sharing with you, you know, 
my, I, I lost my job and you saying, Oh, that, you know, that's, that's too bad. Like it's, it's, um, you know, the, I can put myself in your shoes. How must that feel to have a family you're providing for and no longer have security and an income and figure out what does my life look like next? And I, I think it's, and I do think we as fundraisers are more equipped to do that because that's our job to build connection with people and to um, understand where they're coming from. Uh, but I think it's also on incumbent of us, you know, to be mindful of all the things happening. So when I say training my team, you know, we're, we're set up regionally, right? So I've had a lot more conversations with um, our New York team being really mindful that they are in the thick of it. It's one of the, you know, it's the worst situation in this country right now. Um, you know, what, how are you showing, you know, just telling them that you're thinking of them, um, you know, something that, um, you know, we, this is Holy Week. We're a, a Catholic school. We have all, you know, we have live streaming mass, you know, those are things that you can maybe share with those folks. It just says, I'm thinking of you. If there's anything we can do here at BC, you know, I'm a resource. And so it's, it's definitely a learned skill and I, and I don't think everyone's, um, you know, it's not natural for everyone. Uh, but we also are really fortunate, you know, I think we have support in our, you know, like next week we're, we're bringing on actually two of our coaches, um, who have a counseling background and they are going to be, um, available to, they're going to join some of our frontline fundraising meetings, um, to be that resource. So, cause a lot of us, right. We've never had to be on the, end of someone saying, you know, I, I lost someone or, you know, there's a, there's an anxiety. I think I'm hearing from my team members of what, what do you say if the donor tells you something really tragic and, and that's, um, and so what's what we're partnering, we're bringing in some people who have that background. And I, I think I would encourage other team you know, leaders, if you have that resource, um, because I'm not a counselor, you're not a counselor, you know, we're not, um, we don't have a social work background. And so who, who can you maybe partner with on campus, your school social work or, you know, counseling services to give you some guidance on how to have those conversations. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty astute to have that uh, included, I guess, in the leadership development of those folks who are on your staff. Uh, I'll ask one more question before we wrap. Um, your colleagues, around the country who work in the area you work in, have you talked to them and what are some of the strategies that you guys are sharing with each other in terms of trying to be successful at what you're doing? I imagine it starts with empathy, right? Obviously, but in terms of, you know, the rest of the people around the country that you know that are in the position that you're in. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's kind of been my MO for everything we do, you know, starting with that, that, that value of empathy, um, I think we've been really focused on our regional peers, frankly, because obviously Boston was one of the hardest hit cities and we have a lot of universities here that, you know, so we, we did a lot of benchmarking with BU, with Northeastern, Harvard, MIT, you know, we try to follow um, some of their guidelines. What were they doing? Um, just even our Eagles for Eagles fund, you know, those, those are ideas that we got from, you know, looking at what Michigan did, looking at what um, some of our peers have done. Um, and I think everyone's got to figure out, you know, back to, you know, what's going to fit culturally within your institution. But, you know, one exercise that we've had, we've been doing as a leadership team is just sharing what your alma maters are sending you as, as an alum, right? And I think, you know, giving us some ideas of what's working. Um, and again, I go, I go back to, we're all kind of in different parts of the country, which aren't nearly as, you know, a been really closely in touch with like our my Longhorn Foundation team you know we've, we've actually been doing weekly uh happy hour calls just to kind of reconnect which has been great and so that's just a way that we've you know well it's social but also an opportunity to kind of hear you know what's going on in your world and you know I think on the athletic side it's, it is a little more um there's a lot more I don't want to say fear is not the right word but uh uncertainty and, and kind of what's next, uh, what, what would the world, you know, what, what would happen if we don't have, um, you know, the white elephant in the room, right, about what, what is football going to be. And, and that is so, you know, the livelihood of athletic fundraising is so dependent on that, 
you know, where university fundraising, you know, we can, we can operate without that, right. And, and still ride the, the wave. It's, I mean, it would be devastating across the board, but um, I do feel for my athletic colleagues right now, because I think that um, is wearing on people. Yeah, it is. I've talked to a couple of people about it. It's definitely wearing on them and not knowing what, what you're going to do. And the effects across campus, right, are, are huge. Well, this has been a very educational conversation for me, Wesley. I really appreciate you joining us here on the One Question Leadership Podcast. Well, it was my pleasure and the feeling is mutual. That was Wesley Ellison Stewart. She's Associate Vice President for Major Giving and Development at Boston College. And of course, this is Ty Brown with one question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.